Welcome to another episode of The Artist Report. This video is a talk from the most recent Connecting Things, which is a gathering of creatives in Costa Mesa, Orange County. And if you are anywhere near that area, it's the first Wednesday of each month. You can look it up on connectingthings.co. And this month's speaker was Jenny Cotterell. Um, she is a multifaceted, talented artist. <laughs> she's a sculptor, she's an illustrator, um, she's a painter. You probably saw her rad boxes of death um, dioramas going through Laguna. Um, she's been featured in a ton of different art galleries. She just got done being a community outreach correspondent, or what would you call it? Coordinator. Coordinator. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. That's my name. Um, I, if I'm yelling or anything, just let me know. I've never worn one of these guys before. Um, so I'm an artist and a musician, and I live in Orange County, and I'm really excited that something like this exists. So good job, you guys. Um, I'm a big fan of introducing people and meeting new people, and this is exactly what you're doing, so <clears throat> how thrilling for me. Um, and all of you at the same time, somehow. Um, so everything I've done creatively that's worth mentioning is a combination of internal motivation and then external connections. Um, I used to feel embarrassed about that <laughs> and think I, I've only gotten jobs from people I know, but um, it turns out that's totally legitimate and um, you're supposed to connect with people and meet people and um, help each other out and that's how I've done everything. So um, I've seated the front row with people that <laughs> I've done such things with so that this is less terrifying. Um, I'm talking to you guys. Um, so <clears throat> if anything I'm showing you looks fun, it's just more proof of the value of connecting with other people, which you know because you're here and it's early and you already knew about this lecture series probably, so congratulations. I'm proud of you. Um, so I'm just going to introduce some of my work because I am not sure if anybody knows what I do. Um, I work in 2 and 3D. I use real materials. I recently was telling somebody I do 3D and they were thinking I do like 3D rendering and I was like, no, like caveman 3D, like real stuff. So um, <clears throat> I know now that I need to delineate between the two. Um, I like and use glitter, unironically, in lots of things. And people <laughs> respond OK. I know that was a no-no for a while. No glitter, but I can't help it. So here's a little more glitter. Um, I show in a few galleries, mostly locally. I did get to do a really fun residency in Jacksonville last year. Um, and then the Boxes of Death tour is probably the farthest my artwork has gone. Um, I think that probably goes back to all of my opportunity coming from people that I actually know. Um, but maybe one day I'll go to Mars or something. Um, I like anatomy and gold leaf a lot. Um, I like swap meets and strange fabrics and that kind of comes out in my work. More guts. Here's a Boxes of Death guts box. Um, this was for a Lisa Frank themed art show curated by Kelly Castillo. Um, I would think some of you know who she is. She's the boss lady that runs Rothic Art House and recently stopped doing that to convert this desert house into this project space. She's a force of nature. Um, and one thing she did a few years ago was kind of bring together a lot of female artists. This is how I met the Hoods. Um, and yeah, kudos to boss ladies and connecting people. Um, another person I really like is Tori Cook from Artists Republic for Tomorrow. These are some pieces for one of her shows. <clears throat> they were autobiographical vehicles that I've had in my life and places that they've taken me. And um, This is a mural I did at a friend's pool. They were specific about what they wanted, but um, I just designed it and painted for them. It's kind of like a wall tattoo. They were like, we want it to say this, and we want this, and this, and we want a slow loris, and a sloth, and an ice cream cone, and I was like, okay, you got it. Um, 
So this is at the Great Park in Irvine. I hope some of you guys have been there. It's cool. Um, I did this with Yevgenia Mikhailik, who is amazing. And she's a fantastic organizer and curator and artist. And this was fun. So again, friendship equals projects. Um, I like outer space and I like text. Um, and this kind of goes back to swap meets space. Um, I like fun art that makes me laugh. So this is a real tiny painting in a seashell that seemed absurd to me at the time. It doesn't look that small up there. But um, this is the first thing I made after finishing graduate school once I became a fully formed and serious artist. Um, there's lots of glitter here. Um, I, when I finished school, I had no idea what I was going to do. And I was teaching drawing and illustration, and um, I thought that was my calling, and it kind of wasn't. So um, it was a confusing time, as many people who have finished school know. Um, but I learned it's OK to make your own way. Um, I had a lot of random jobs in my life, and one of them was doing backgrounds for Metalocalypse, which was super fun. Um, content-wise, because it was like, uh, what does their bathroom look like? There needs to be more blood and maybe <laughs> some more skulls. And you know, make sure you put in all the details. And it was like, this is so silly. OK. Um, but I found out I don't really do well sitting at a desk every day, um, which is important to know about yourself um, when finding a job. Um, anyway, so. I recently left my job at Hurley, which is where I was the Community Outreach Artist Coordinator. And that meant a lot of different things and was so fun for so long, and it just was time to leave, so I left. Um, but I wanted to go over a couple things that we did there that might be interesting to you. Um, this is a shot from an art wall that I set up out in Florida. And I didn't know anybody in Florida, so it was just a series of phone calls and internet messages and kind of um, stepping stones to find the right people. And it worked. You just ask people, <laughs> and they tell you who they know. And then you know, as long as you're not a creep, they'll give you their phone numbers, and you can make things happen. So uh, I started at Hurley because I ran into my friend Josh Grelock at a concert. Um, he is amazing and is an artist and musician. This is him pondering existence over here on the left. It's a little, a little bright in here. Um, and that's our boss, Jason Maloney, who's also an artist. Um, so that was our whole department, was the three of us. And it was crazy and fun. And Josh is still there having crazy fun. Um, uh, originally, I came on to help paint these Dalek murals that we were putting up. Um, and I'd never done anything like that, and that's kind of exhilarating to just have to figure something out, which was a lot of that job. Um, so we did this a few times. This is post Dalek. Um, here's what's on the wall now. Um, and one of the best parts about Hurley, besides getting to actually paint and getting to hang out with my friend Josh every day, um, is hiring people that you like. And, having these crazy projects and crazy deadlines where it's like, this has to be done by Friday. It's three murals. Who are we calling? Who's available? So, um, and that goes back to connecting things big time. So this, do you know who this is? Clarence. They know. OK. <laughs> um, I knew they would know. This is Clarence. He's a cartoon character. He's on television right now. And I identify with him a lot. He's very social and silly. and kind of embarrassing and ridiculous sometimes, but um, well-meaning. And um, he just kind of stirs up stuff with his friends and makes things happen. Maybe they're not good, but. Um, so this is sort of like the visual chorus of my presentation. When I show you Clarence, I'm trying to say, I called my friends, and then we made things happen. And you can call your friends and make things happen. So, And eat pizza rolls. He eats pizza rolls, too. So I do that. Um, so we get these crazy projects, and we'd have to call our friends, and they would be awesome, and we would get sunburns and have a great time and get people paid. Um, we did random things, like this enormous wheat paste nightmare for the US Open of surf was actually one of the worst 
times we've ever had, but it looks cool, so I thought I'd put it in the slideshow. Um, we did some remodels and installations, and um, the best part was you, you were always going to do something different, and I have a hard time repeating myself, which I hope I don't do today, but um, we painted some ceilings and some office spaces and remodeled some things, and we got to go up to Nike and paint this mural. It was cool. Very corporate. Um, for a year, we had a store down in Laguna Beach um, that, uh, as part of their lease, we had to have art shows every month, and that was the best part of the job. I keep saying everything was the best. It was the best. Um, so we got to curate these art shows every month, which is a lot, on top of all your extra work. So you definitely call your friends for these art shows, and you mix them in with artists that you haven't met but maybe want to meet and you know think would go well together. It was it was really fun. Hey, this guy. That's Kevin Bannister. He made this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you got the text message. Enter when I say, okay. <laughs> I'm taking full credit for that. Wow. Oh my God, the universe is amazing. Okay. So um, it was fun. Kevin made this. This was a flyer. This is the fight in Wayne's World. I meant to put a slide of that in here because I watched all the presentations and I was like, those airplanes are really getting in there, but I, I blew it. I'll just tell you about Wayne's World. Um, uh, so curating these art shows was great. Um, these, we got to hire bands that we liked. That was cool. You know, you get to, when you get this corporate signature at the bottom of your email, you can write to anybody <laughs> and, and ask them to come over and be like, we'll pay you, you know, oh, I work for Hurley, like, it's cool. <laughs> and they don't know that you're not very important there. So they're like, oh, Hurley called, I gotta call them back. Um, I got to meet Craig Skibbs Barker, who might be a good person to talk here. Do you guys know him? He's an Orange County, big deal. Artist, musician, cool drummer dude. For the yeah, drummer for the Stitches, if that helps. Um, anyway, uh, it's Craig with some of his work, and then Ed Culver, who's a super famous, super seriously badass photographer that Josh used his email signature <laughs> to <laughs> become friends with and <laughs> invite to be in this art show. So it's totally okay. Um, we had, you know, fun bands. That's one of my alarms going off. Um, Pardon me. Meet each other if you haven't already. Okay. Stop. Okay. Time to wake up. I have I have like 19 alarms. This might happen a lot. Um. Okay. Well, oh, that wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, one of the last shows we had there was this big blowout, like 80 person skateboard show, and um, if that work in the window looks familiar, it's because Sarah M. Lyons made them, and we knew she was a badass and gave her the window because she was like starting to launch her own business, and it would be a good opportunity for exposure, and she killed it, and she's um, real famous right now, so. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Here's some skateboards from the show. Here's Sarah with cool hair. Um, we do really weird, sometimes it's like, okay, now we're painting a pool, so figure out what kind of paint we need for that, which I didn't get the right paint the first time. Um, that just <laughs> happens, you know, and then everyone's mad at you for like a week and you're like, okay, well, let's get some new paint. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's not that bad. Um, we gave it to somebody else. They used it for like a school play backdrop, so it's fine. We didn't waste anything. Um, and then we made silly internal things. We got to paint this Wahoo's mural. That's just something that we do. That's how we greet each other. That's just standard. That's Josh again. Um, we had big art shows on campus. That was fun, crazy. Here's another installation we were working on. That's Josh flying to the moon inside this monolith that we had to put together, which was fun. Um, I got to work with schools. That was amazing because schools don't have enough art. So we got to come and be like, what do you want? And they were always like, we want a mural. And we were like, OK. So we did this one at T-Winkle, which is an adorable place with a cute name. 
And this is the last one we did ever, um, a couple weeks ago at Davis Magnet School, which is really a neat place. If you have a smart little child that likes science, math, and technology, that's a place they could go. Um, and then ultimately the creative stuff slowed down and this is me at the end of that time at Hurley just reading and doing numbers and keeping track of things and so it's hard to do that after you've been doing wild things. Um, I gotta, I'm doing okay on time. Um, so I decided to leave um, uh, because I had been picking up freelance because when you meet people opportunities come your way and when you're doing things people call you to do things and it's just this magic formula that you just start a snowball and it becomes this enormous thing with its own momentum. So um, the freelance opportunities were really cool and I didn't want to say no to anything ever. So um, I was conflicted and asking myself, how am I going to make these puppets for this movie that I want to make and get the money for because that sounds hilarious and fun, but also go to work every day and do all this paperwork and then get things ready with the band, we're going on all these tours, and just it just was time. So I decided to leave and just freelance. That's me leaving. Um, I'm working with the airport too, not just Kevin Bannister. There's lots of surprises today. Um, <laughs> T-shirt cannon at the end, so stick around. I don't know what's in it, but um, so. All right, good, everyone's laughing. Um, so now I work for myself. <laughs> um, this is my website, and I make a lot of wedding cake toppers, which probably sounds like dinky small potatoes garbage after Hurley, but I really like making something special for people, um, and I like meeting people, and this is a weird, perfect way to do that. So sometimes it's friends, and sometimes it's like a gift for somebody I've never met, and if I ever meet them, I'll know who they are, weirdly, <laughs> and they'll be like, who's this person charging me? Um, so I've been doing these and it's fun and I think it's making me happy. Here's another one. Um, here's another one. That dog can actually not ride in this scooter, I think, maybe legally. But um, So um, like I mentioned the puppets. I can't show you them because they're not finished yet and I probably shouldn't show you, but this is just an example of a puppet that I made last year for a TV pilot. And it was fun, and it was like, no, I don't know how to do that, but I will do that for that money, and <laughs> then I can say I've done that. And that's another magic thing, where you just do things, and then you have done them. So, so I left my job and all that money, <laughs> but um, my life is good, and I'm really happy. When I told people I was leaving, a lot of people were like, are you, is that good? And I was like, I'm leaving, I didn't get fired. Like, it's not like, I'm like that, Anybody watch Bear City, that sketch on Saturday Night Live a few years ago? Changed my life, apparently, <laughs> just me. But it was like bears doing things that people do in real short sketches, and this bear is telling an inappropriate joke in a water cooler, and there's no words, they just are wearing these shitty mismatched bear heads, and, like, and he gets caught by the boss, and then the next scene is him crying, holding a box, like, leaving. <laughs> so it wasn't like I left like that. Tangent. <laughs> I left because I wanted to. Um, all right, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit where I came from, since everything is connected. Um, this is my family, minus my brother, I don't know, maybe he's taking the picture. Um, I'm from the Midwest, <laughs> which is why I'm nice, and my, for real, you can't be a jerk in the Midwest, people don't tolerate it, they're like, that person, don't work with them. Um, That was a little, that was like my slide beep. I came a little early. Um, so I'm nice and my family's fantastic and they've been very supportive and I appreciate them and maybe this is an overstatement, but my brother is really smart and he works for Apple like designing user interface. And um, so he, being a smart, precocious child made school look really fun. So I was really amped to start school and um, maybe didn't realize it's not that fun, but um, I did get really into all my projects and I, and I talked way too much, which is kind of happening right now. Um, but so all my parent-teacher conference reports were like, Jennifer is very enthusiastic. She talks too much. 
to her neighbors. Um, and like, I mean, I think I had my name on the board every single day from like first grade through, they stopped doing that in sixth grade, but like, and then they just send you in the hall. But um, that was me. Um, but it turns out that was my one in eight job skill, so I don't feel bad about it. And if you have chatty children, just encourage it. Um, I always wanted to do everything, which probably was annoying for my parents because I was like, I want to, you know, I want to build this, and then I'm going to make this, and they were like, okay, well, see you in the basement, like, just help yourself to whatever, don't get hurt, and um, it was it was a great childhood. So, um, but there are no artists that I knew of in Michigan, and I knew I wanted to study art. Um, and I tried to go to school for a year and not study art because um, I just didn't think it was possible. Um, the only artists I ever met were my teachers, and that's not really the same thing. <laughs> not that I'm playing that down, but it's not. I was like, I'm going to be an artist, and that means I'm going to be Mrs. Kavanaugh. You know, like, <laughs> no, you're not. <sighs> Ooh, that's good. Then I moved. <laughs> Thanks, airport. This is great. Um, so I, I cats have a this cats have a job. That cat works at the airport. Um, so I left college. Uh, I failed out of college. I tried to go to college. Let's start over. I, st I tried to go to college for a year and not study art, and I totally failed. And was like, I gotta start over. So I decided to move as far away as I could, which was here. Um, but I did no research, and I thought all of California was San Francisco, and. Um, I ended up here, and I haven't left, which is kind of crazy when you shoot for San Francisco and end up here and you stay, but I was like, I gotta make some money before I leave, and then I met all these nice people, and um, I went to Saddleback College, which was lucky, that was just the closest school, and it's amazing. I don't know if you already know that, but there are like amazing teachers there, like this guy. It's one of the worst slides I've ever shown, but it's kind of bright, so. Um, John Cedarquist. Does anyone know who that guy is? Good. Good. He's amazing, right? Oh, my God. When he showed his work, I was like, brother, this needs to be the first day of class. I don't want you waiting until mid-semester to be like, by the way, I'm this guy, you know? <laughs> so that really changed my life. And I was like, oh, art can be super fun and weird and legit. He's in the Smithsonian. He's legit. Um, Anyway, so my teachers were really supportive and they were telling me, you know, maybe you should go to Long Beach. It's like a secret art school for people that don't have a lot of money and want to get a job without student loans. And I was like, okay. So I checked it out and I got in and I studied, that's me, uh, I studied illustration and I met wonderful people there. Um, some of them are here. And um, I got my BFA and my MFA and I did some teaching at the end of my MFA and that was cool, and I was surrounded by very focused people, which made me a little self-conscious because I liked to use a lot of different media and explore different things. And um, I, this is some of my undergrad work, if that explains things. Like it just was like, I finished with this portfolio. That's a painting of Sarah, actually. <laughs> she used to have blonde hair. Um, I had this portfolio that just was like, where are you going with this? You know, what are we going to do with you? Um, and I think I have internalized that and was like, yeah, it is a weakness. I really need to focus. But for at least the last job I had, it was a boon. You know, like, um, I could figure that out. I could figure that out. I've done a little mold making. We could figure that out. Like, so um, I'm convinced it was a good thing. Um, and I also kind of learned you shouldn't compare yourself to other people. Like, just keep your eyes ahead and do what you're doing. Um, I, I had a couple jobs along the way that helped me out. I had, was making these signs. This sounds not like it would be relevant, but I really like type. And um, I hand lettered all this ridiculous stuff every day. And I kind of got to learn more about hand lettering and type. And it was cool. I painted some bunnies on furniture. Not as cool. Um, I worked at an antique mall. This really informed my practice and my interest in like design and changes and like placing things in time to get a certain look and um, yeah, made me who I am. So um, this is a manifestation of the sign job showing up in paintings, you know, letters, yeah. Um, 
So I'm in grad school and it's time to figure out what I'm doing and everybody's like, oh, I do this and I do it really well and I was like, I'm still experimenting and I'm sorry. So um, <laughs> these are some of my first steps into um, putting together mismatched materials into one body of work. And it was fun and I think it turned out okay, but it was just the first incarnation. So you gotta, you gotta move on. So I moved on and I had to make a thesis show out of my various interests. And the only thing I could do to keep myself entertained was to make a museum of procrastination. So, cause I'm an expert at procrastination and I like different media. So it was great, turned out great. So it turns out you can make your ADD lemons into lemonade. <laughs> and these are some slides from this thing. I didn't have to make anything more than once, which I love. I hate repetition. Um, this is a surveillance camera from my clones. One of the options is to clone yourself if you don't like what you're doing. Um, so I got to make video and it was fun. Um, I graduated and everybody I graduated with was selling work and getting shows and getting jobs and I was like, <laughs> bye, <laughs> have fun. <sighs> um, so, um, but like I said, I found out later, it's okay. Uh, being a jack of all trades is actually a good thing. Some people might try to use it in a negative sense, but for me, it works. This is me after I graduated, <laughs> seeing everybody having their, their success. <laughs> and I didn't pay for that image, so there is a hard watermark on it, but I'm not selling you anything, so. Um, uh, then I got some kind of fun freelance sort of coming my way from when people I knew were too busy. Um, I got to design some murals for Parks and Rec, nice. which, <laughs> right? Thank you. I know. They called and they were like, so um, have you seen the show? And I was like, <gasps> yes. Like, I, stupid question. Like, it's so, a, okay, good. Um, so that, that was really fun. Um, you know, I illustrated a book for some person that I never met, <laughs> ever, and, uh, you know, did some random stuff. This is random stuff. Um, I was kind of scrapping together a living. And the hints is, uh, sorry, the future, good morning, I haven't slept. Um, the, the cool thing about scrapping things together is that the pieces get bigger later as you go, and, and it just gets smoother, so. Um, this is a quote that I really identify with. Um, and it sort of makes me feel better about my life <laughs> and my choices and my direction and the way that it wiggles. And um, so in three ways, I internalize this. First is that small pieces add up to entire lives. And second is you should use what you've got. And third is that you can take the opportunities that come to you. You don't have to be like, my supermodel contract isn't coming, you know? <laughs> like, you're 5'3", and like, have a postmenopausal body type, that's not coming, you know? <laughs> like, you're just gonna have to wait for something that makes sense for you. So, um, what I have are versatile skills, and um, anyway, small pieces adding up is shown here in this Ben Venom quilt, which is totally what Virginia Woolf had in mind when she said that, <laughs> like, take all your old metal shirts and do this, Virginia. So, <laughs> getting weird. Um, anyway, it's just proof that small pieces add up. Um, and small, exciting pieces are my whole life right now and I really couldn't be happier. Um, uh, the second part of that was use what you've got. Here's some examples of that. This is Josh again. This presentation is just about Josh, actually. Um, this is your life. So when we were at Hurley, when I was at Hurley, we'd been having those monthly shows and it was great and then we lost that space and we were like, oh, what do we do now? And Josh said, well, we have this giant office and a ton of leftover mural paint and a bunch of people that have a need for opportunities. So we started this monthly residency where we invited people to come in and paint a giant mural and make them a professional video by this gentleman. He makes the greatest videos in the world. Daniel Ibarra, if anybody needs him. Um, so it was great. We, we you know, were using nothing and making great things out of it. So we called our friends <laughs> and invited them to come and paint. This is Andy Anderson, who should probably be here. Um, he's, he's, yeah, it's, he's a little bit of a hesher. I don't know if you can tell. So he um, shreds in some bands and 
Screen Prince t-shirts and did all the graphics for Grill Them All. Maybe you guys have seen that truck. It's a heavy metal burger truck and now restaurant. Um, this is him working on his mural. Um, it was cool. So we, and here's Nancy Chu. She's here. Um, she's fantastic. And all of her work is very delicate and very personal. And it was really cool to say, come over and paint this giant thing. And she did it. And she killed it. And it was amazing. And then didn't you have the giant painting in a show later? Yeah. See? Boom. Got a video. Got a giant painting out of it. It was great. This is Nick Simich. He's another rock and roller and screen printer in the area, working on his sort of screen printy giant mural. This kid um, was cleaning toilets at Disneyland, which is crazy because he painted this. And Josh met him through music and invited him to come do this. And he used the video to get a job at Fox Animation. <laughs> so it works. Anyway, another example of using what you've got is. Um, this project I did with Sarah a few years ago called Library Sciences. Um, so we were writing songs and drawing pictures and didn't have any money to do anything with it. Sarah made this beautiful drawing of us looking like babes. Um, she's an illustrator. Um, and I'll use that as an indication of my work. <laughs> um, so uh, we had these pieces. We had songs, we had drawings, we had no money, and LA Zine Fest was coming out and on the scene. So Sarah signed us up for that. And we made these things called audio zines, which is what you get when you don't have the money to professionally reproduce your music. <laughs> you make a zine to illustrate the music and burn the CDs and then put a header card on it. And everybody was like, shut up. This is amazing. We sold out. It was like, you know, and we were like, when do we tell people that this is just because we didn't have money or resources, you don't have to. Um, so um, another, I love this one, take the opportunities that come your way. That's the third part of my Virginia Woolf speech. I wanted a dog. <laughs> and I was like perving on dogs and checking out dogs and researching dogs and like annoying everyone around me by constantly talking about getting a dog. And they were like, you're never getting a dog. Like, why don't you have one yet if you want one so bad? And I was like, I don't know. So I'm on the way to band practice, and I'm like scoping dogs. Like, oh, look at that one. It was ridiculous. It was like a, a movie, you know? And then we get to band practice, and there's this little dirty, skinny chicken of a dog huddled up and totally dehydrated against the fence outside the practice studio. And I was like, <laughs> like, she heard me. She's here. So, um, so that's my dog, you know? She came to me. And she's the best, too. Like, if I had gone and picked out a dog, it wouldn't have been better than this dog. She rules. Um, so take those dog opportunities. Um, <laughs> another take the opportunities that come your way. I never wanted to be a new band in my 30s. Like, that seems late to me. And like, I, you know, everybody else I know is like, we're getting married, and we're buying a house, and we're pregnant. And I'm like, I'm in a band that's considered new. Um, <laughs> cool, like, you're doing stuff, I'm doing stuff. Um, but this came to me, and it would be foolish to not take it, right? Um, I got to go to Europe with my friends, and we're going to do it again. We met that beautiful blonde lady in the back there. She saved us in Berlin. We had a driver with a drinking problem. She saved us. Um, so, and now she's here, so you make friends. Okay. Um, it also was a good opportunity to be like, I have the, the chance to distribute something internationally with my art on it. So I got really pushy and was like, no one else is allowed to make any art for this band except for me. This is my rocket ship. So, um, and it worked. I got a bunch of cool work from this. Um, this record is coming out in two weeks at this show. Woo! Um, see you there. Get a ticket ahead of time. Um, yeah, I got to make tour posters and stuff. Um, and then I got this tape cover from it. Just meeting people and doing things. Got to make this record cover. It's good. Um, this is my friend Jill. She is incredible. And she always says, make your own party. And she's right. Um, she just means, like, take responsibility for your own happiness. Um, any situation is probably not going to be ideal. So 
do what you can to get the most that you can out of it. And I think you guys probably understand that because you got up really early to come and listen to something silly like this and meet people, <laughs> have coffee, that's an opportunity. Um, anyway, uh, I was researching transcendental meditation a while ago before I decided to quit my job and became much happier. Um, and one of the things I really appreciated was the concept that every human is like a seed with the ability to become a great tree. And I was like, that's beautiful. And it's totally true. And the way I interpret that is that everyone has what they need to do whatever they want inside them. <laughs> That sounds so cheesy. But, um, so I'm showing you this slide of the universe within a human form. But it's double duty, because I also made that. Um, so um, you take control of what you want, and you get the things that you want. And don't put that on anybody else. I have a friend that has these great ideas, but she is always waiting for someone else to schedule it. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, that's your dream. You do it. Just go get this stuff and do it. Um, so do it yourself. Maybe you've heard of that. If you want to be doing something, set it up. Don't wait for an invitation. This applies to everything. Um, many years ago, I wanted to show my work, and no one knew who I was, so I got a show. And then after that, people were like, oh, yeah, you've shown. It's cool. We can show you. Um, and the same thing with the band. You know, I wanted to play music. Start a band. Then you're a band. Boom. You did it. Um, <laughs> And then there's some people, though, here's a, here's a band. This is my band. Um, some people, we didn't do that. <laughs> We're not vandals. Come on. But it is something to behold. Um, some people will be angry with you for not waiting for an invitation, but you, that's usually a clue that you don't need to listen to those people. <laughs> They're jealous because you aren't waiting like they are. So do this. Um, good. That's what I wanted. Um, I really love slideshows, so I was really excited to make this <laughs> slideshow. Sarah told me something about PowerPoint karaoke, and I desperately want to do that. But you know, got to make the time. Um, for real, feel free to edit out negativity. It feels so good. I know maybe the negativity is from your family. If you can edit that in any way, I'm not being cold-hearted, but like. Some people are like a black hole and they'll just suck the life out of you and you don't need it. And if you share good news with somebody and their reaction is like, hmm. Or if they like immediately come back with like, well, your dog is old, you know? Or something like, they just want you to feel bad about something, just be like, oh. like, we'll talk never. So don't worry about it. That's you. You're in the driver's seat. You're in control of your own life. Take yourself where you want to go. Okay. Or the plane. We should, I should move faster, right? You wanna know about this? Okay, all right. <laughs> um, I like to think of opportunities as like an instrument. So some people have an amazing guitar, but they don't play it. Um, conversely, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of like toy garbage instruments that we got at the swap meet. Like Sarah and I got to tour. <laughs> Go a bunch of fun places and have free vacations, so make your own party. Um, this is where we get to the point. Um, human resources, really powerful change in that slide. Um, maybe a little cheesy, but um, I've already given you Garfield font for this whole thing, so I don't have to feel bad about cheese. It's my favorite font right now. Um, so. Um, I do everything by talking to people, and I told you that already. When I was teaching, I would meet these discontented young people who were like, I'm just not getting what I want. This decree isn't doing anything. I'm wasting my time. And it's like, if you're not meeting everybody in this classroom, you are wasting your time. It's not your teacher's job to get you a job. It's no one else's job to fulfill your dreams. Like, you need to make friends. You need to meet people. And don't be sleazy about it. Like, networking is the sleazy version of making friends, and people can see right through it. So meet people for real and take a minute to talk to them. And uh, I might have to speed up. We did this art wall at the US Open by networking. <laughs> Here's Josh painting the last week of that, looking like an amazing tough guy with his little kid cowboy hat, painting a cool painting, you know? Um, this is, you guys probably don't need this. I was sort of imagining like 
people that wouldn't get up early to come to something like this, but I put together some guidelines for making meaningful connections with people. Um, this is going to change your life. Um, for real, be patient and respectful when talking to people. Um, I meet a lot of rude people who are very unhappy, and it's like, if you would just slow down, give people some space, better things will come to you. People can feel your negative energy and feel that you hate them immediately, and like, just you don't know these people. Everyone was a baby. Everyone has a family. Everybody dealt with something probably terrible in their life and give them some room. And don't ever enter a situation or a place thinking, all oh, these people are jackasses, which I have heard people say and seen them do. And it's like, you're going to fall on your face if you go in like that. This is you if you go in like that. Um, I made that. <laughs> it's inspired by people like this. Um, the second thing is, let people tell you something amazing. If you give people a chance, they will probably tell you something amazing. Everybody has something cool that you didn't know about them. Um, so I met one of my favorite people in the world trying to book an artist uh, to paint live in Florida. I was just on the phone with this woman, and we were, it was fun, and we were talking, and then I found out she's an artist. This is us talking. Um, and um, I looked her up after the, present, after the phone call, and and this is her, she's amazing. That's some art she makes. She uses all these found natural objects because Florida. Um, and she does bookkeeping for this converted factory that's an artist studio and gallery in Jacksonville. So then a year later, she invited me to come back and do a residency, which I was like, big payoff for talking to people. Like, I got to meet somebody I really like and we're trading work, which is like a huge a dream of mine. Um, Anyway, she's like Leslie Nope and Eugenie Davis of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so uh, this is my boyfriend, Aaron. He's an artist too. He does not have a leaf face, but um, we, we both went out and we did this um, residency and had a great time. This is some of his work to explain. Um, it was fun. Just good things come from talking to people and not just people you know. We sold a lot of work. It was cool. Painted this giant painting <laughs> together. <laughs> And this diorama about a sexy tableau between a plant man and a lady wrestler. Um, so um, the last thing is um, differences make groups stronger. I'm kind of speeding up, but it's over. Um, so uh, don't just make friends with people that are just like you. That's a great way to not get anything done or be kind of stuck. Um, um, I hope you guys all know each other. But if not, I'll make you introduce each other at the end. Um, uh, a great example of differences making a stronger group is my band. Um, we're all really different, and between the four of us, we have most of the lights on. Um, and that allows us to do so many more things than we would alone. Um, like buy all this treasure at the liquor store. Um, <laughs> it's just good, like, action movie math. Like, you would never put a heist together with a bunch of tech guys. Like, you have to have different people in there. So. It's like this. So I encourage you to build your super friends network today. Um, seek out connections and make them. Um, this seems out of place, but I just thought I'd see if people were still listening at the end. This is my connections joke, but then this is the real one. Like it's a friendship, <laughs> connections. Cool.